All right, we're going to look right now at converting between forms of the equation for uh, rational functions. Different forms of the equation tell us different things. Some give us more information about uh, various aspects of the function. Other forms make it more convenient for graphing. We're going to look right now at algebraically changing between them. All right, so what I've got here is a rational function, one that looks like something you've seen before. And I've got the asymptotes shown just to help us here, the horizontal asymptote at 2 and the vertical asymptote at negative 4. So we're going to try and write the equation from that, given the graph here, and then we'll compare it with what's in here. So I'll flip over to a picture of this graph that I can write on. That's that same graph. And we again, of course, have this horizontal asymptote at 2, the vertical asymptote here at negative 4. We can write the equation in this form from the graph pretty easily, a over x minus h plus k, as hopefully you've seen before. Of course, the two asymptotes give us these shifts here. 4 to the left is going to mean it's x plus 4 in the bottom there. 2 up is going to be plus 2 over here. To find this a value up here, to find that a value, you have a couple of options that, again, you've hopefully seen those before. You can look at the pattern in the points that we can see here. Pattern in the points, uh, points where it actually passes through a grid point. Right, this looks like it's three one, or we have, or we have one three, right, or we have negative three negative one, or negative one negative three. That looks like it's uh, numbers that multiply to three. The other thing you could do to find that that a value is three is you could use the coordinates of a point, a single point, like that point right there. The coordinates are negative 1, 3. You could substitute those in for x and y here and solve for a, all right? But we won't bother doing that right now because we've got that it's 3 here, right? So we've got that this thing is a 3. So that's the equation of that function there. Let's just flip back and see what we've got in that software. So the equation I have in here, now I've kind of set this up to uh, get you to think here a little bit because, or not to trick you, but maybe to trick you a little bit here, that's the equation that I've got in here. Now before I said we wrote the equation of that function, there's more than one equation you can write, and those equations are going to be algebraically the same. This is exactly the same as if I had instead here uh, what we found on the other page, that I had 3 over x plus 4, and then I had a plus 2 on the end, right? There's that equation that we have. Didn't change, right? Same function. So why is that? Why are those two the same? Well, we're going to look at that right now. So why do these two equations that we had represent the same function? Well, we're going to start with this one and see if we can change it algebraically to look like that one. Now, if you've done any kind of work with rational expressions before, you will see that it is actually not too hard. you got two separate parts here. And this is a single fraction. So we're going to try and combine them together in a single fraction. And to do that, you need to make a common denominator. So I'm going to multiply this one by x plus 4 over x plus 4, because then I've got this common denominator. I can put it all together. I'll expand that thing on top and make it 2x plus 8. And then I'll put it over that single denominator of x plus 4. If you write that together now, you've got 2x plus and the 3 and the 8 combined together to give you 11 over x plus 4. So without too much uh, difficulty, you can show that that function that we wrote is the same as the one that I had entered into the software. To go the other way, it's a little bit harder. We're going to take this one now and see if we can turn it back into the what we had. To do that, you're going to have to kind of go backwards through these steps here. You're going to have to think through what your goal is. We want to have, we want to change it so we don't have x on the top and the bottom, just so we have a single fraction that is a whole number on top or an integer or some kind of number on top without an x term, and then another constant added on here. So to start to change this to the other form, what we need to do here is to think about what part of this divides nicely by x plus 4. So you can think how much you've got there and what you could divide nicely by. The part that divides nicely, I can say, well, if this were an 8, that would divide nicely by x plus 4. Unfortunately, it's not an 8. It's an 11. So 
to keep it the same here, I actually need to make that into a three. In other words, you're leaving this two X alone, but you're turning this 11 into an eight plus three. You're not changing it. You're just writing it like that because then now we can do that division. We can write it separately. We can write it as two X plus eight over X plus four plus three over X plus four. Now maybe you can see the reason we split it that way. This divides nicely. If you wanted to factor it, you can to see that. If you can see that it's going to divide to 2, that's fine. But if you want to write it as 2x plus 4, x plus 4, that's also fine. Plus 3 over x plus 4. And then if you actually want to even see that, well, these divide. And we're going to end up with just our 2 plus 3x plus 4. Then the standard kind of way we were writing it before is to put the 2 afterwards, but it doesn't matter. We can write it as 3x plus 4 plus 2, right? So that's turning it back and forth in between one form and the other, all right? This form helps us graph the thing nicely because you can see where the asymptotes are and everything like that. This form is nice sometimes because it's a single fraction, and some of the analysis you're going to do later on with these types of functions are easier when it's a single fraction. We're going to look at several more examples now and see if we can do the more difficult part here. If you think about which is the more difficult uh, way, it's the more difficult way is to take this and turn it back into this form, this sort of standard graphing form. So we're going to work through a few more examples here. This first one might look a little bit different, but we're going to approach it exactly the same way. We have 3x on top. We have x plus 2 on the bottom. We need to think about what do we need there in order to have it have a common factor of that x plus 2. Well, x plus 2, if we make this 3x plus 6, right, then that has a common factor, right? 1 to 2, 3 to 6, right? That same ratio there. Except I can't just put a 6 here. i got to balance it out. There's nothing up here. So I got to put minus six there too, right? Then those two expressions are exactly the same. I can group it then like this. I'll actually factor that as well. Three X plus two and then minus six. And I'll even split the denominators right now just to save a bit of space here. And we can get rid of that. And then we have our three minus six X plus two. Then you can write it in that usual order, which has this term first. Now there's a minus in between, so we've got to carry that through. It's minus 6 over x plus 2 plus 3. So that's that more standard form. Do the second one here, but I'll squeeze a little room here for myself for this. Shrink that over there. I mean, you can still read it, but it's a little bit out of the way. If we're going to work with this one, we're going to write the 2x. We're going to leave the 7 for a second. We have x minus 6 on the bottom. To have a, have a common factor there, x to 2x means minus 6, right? That ratio is twice as big, so we need this to be twice as big here. It needs to be a 12. If that's a 12 and this is a 7 up here, I can't just put that 12 there. What I need is I need this to be plus 19 because minus 12 plus 19 gives me my 7 there. So then I can write it as 2 x minus 6 over x minus 6 plus 19 over x minus 6. And I can, again, get rid of those, divide to, to 1. So I have 2 plus 19 over x minus 6. And then put it in that standard order with this term first. 19 over x minus 6 plus 2, All right? Now, last one there. Let's uh, make a bit of space for it again. And we're going to, first of all, that order on top there, it might be better if we wrote it in the reverse order. So I'm going to write negative 6x plus 5 on top over 2x plus 3. I'm going to just focus on the negative 6x first. So I'm going to leave the 5 for a second while we look at this. This one has a 2 as a coefficient on the bottom. But that's not going to be too bad because all we need to do is have something here that's going to work, right? This is negative 3 times more than that. So I need something that's negative 3 times more than that. 
right? So I need negative 9 there. Now, again, plus 5, minus 9, got to balance it out. Can't change it, so I need plus 14 here, all right? No, I'm not just going to write negative 6 and start writing this because we need to have this common factor of 2x plus 3 on the top. This is actually negative 3 times 2x plus 3, and on the bottom it's just 2x plus 3. All right? And then my 14 over here over 2x plus 3. All right, we can cancel that common factor, 2x plus 3, 2x plus 3. All right, leaves us with that negative 3 there. So we've got negative 3 plus 14 over 2x plus 3. Now, it might look like we're finished, but our standard form always has x plus or minus something on the bottom because then we can use that to locate that asymptote. Now, this is still fine, but if we want to look at it as our standard form where, you know, the number added on here represents a translation, it's easier if we, oops, lost my six. It's easier if we do one slight last change here. Instead of saying 14 divided by 2x plus 3, we can make it into something that is going to look more like our standard form if we simply look at this and divide the top and the bottom by 2. If we divide everything on the top and the bottom by 2, it's still going to be the same fraction. It's going to be the same value. It's just we're going to have, instead there, we're going to have 7, and we're going to have x plus 1.5. Right? Divide it, haven't changed it. So that's our function. If we want to write it in a more standard form, then we just reverse those two things. So we put the 7 over x plus 1.5 here, and then we put our minus 3 here. So that one's a little trickier but you get it to that standard form just the same. So hopefully now you do a bit of practice on your own and uh, get pretty good and quick at changing functions that look like that into this more standard form that allows you to graph them a little more conveniently uh, when you're graphing by hand. All right, that's it.